Federal Executive Council approves immediate deployment of technology equipment to enhance the operations of the NDLDA. Victims of Monday's attack on the Abuja Kaduna train service discharged from hospital. Bill which seeks to provide support and protection for witnesses passed by the Senate. Good morning, Nigeria. Today, we continue our conversation on the terrorist attack on the Abuja Kaduna train service. Oh, well, Kinsley, a Monday night of this week will never be forgotten by Nigerians and the families of passengers of the Abuja Kaduna train attack. No question about that. Mm -hmm. that about the death toll officially is now eight, and there are some 41 persons who are said to have been injured in the incident and are receiving treatment, while some of them, of course, have been discharged from hospital. Several top ranking government officials, including the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Loki Rabo, the Inspector General of Police, the Kaduna State Governor, and the Minister of Transportation have visited the scene of the attack as well as the hospitals where the injured were taken to monitor the uh, treatment of survivors. And indeed March 28 attack on the rail line between Abuja and Kaduna is the second on that rail track leaving government with no option but to shut down rail services on that axis. Now this uh, implies that uh, the highway uh, is now the uh, only a viable alternative for commuters and um, that of course uh, is not uh, creating quite some excitement we understand for obvious reasons even though there have been assurances from the security agencies of increased patrols and security on the Abuja Kaduna Highway. Well, this attack has raised issues of security management within and outside the coaches, compensation for victims, the need for better infrastructure and so on, Kinsley. <coughs> now the nation, of course, is in mourning and the Federal Executive Council uh, took time to also honor the victims on uh, Wednesday at its meeting. Uh, that was by a one minute uh, silence. And President Muhammad Buhari has equally directed security operatives to fish out the perpetrators of the terror attack. Now we began a conversation on the train attack on Tuesday and uh, today we will take another look at the incident with a new set of guests. On that note, we'd like to welcome you to, to this edition of Good Morning Nigeria. I'm Kingsley Osadolo. As always, we are reaching you on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We are live from our Abuja headquarters studios. And I'm Yusuf Nadab Usman, also welcoming you to the program. We will bring you our complimentary segments at the appropriate time and for now here is the morning news at Comfort Amad. Good morning, Comfort. Good morning, Nadabo and Kinsley. Good to have you this morning, and good morning, Nigerians. Now, encouraged by the unprecedented strikes being achieved recently by the NDLEA in the renewed efforts at reading Nigeria off the drug menace, the Federal Executive Council has approved immediate deployment of technological equipment towards enhancing the operations of the agency and the council meeting presided over by President Mahmoud Buhari also approved contracts for the provision of critical infrastructure in parts of the country for socio-economic development and job creation. The capacity of the NDLEA in exterminating illicit drugs trafficking sales and consumption, the federal government has approved the supply of eye scanning lie detector that have the capacity to detect whether you are indeed speaking the truth or indeed you are lying in the course of investigation. 
and the efforts by the agency has led to the arrest of a suspected uh, kingpin syndicate operating at the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos, and five other members of his gang being arrested by the operatives as well of the drug, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The agency says the syndicate is behind the smuggling of over 1.5 million tablets of tramadol seized recently by the operators of the agency in collaboration with aviation security and customs service personnel at the airport. The seized items include 17 cartons of 250 milligram of tramadol branded as Tamar. Tamra, weighing 669.70 kilogram and five cartons of 225 milligram tramadol branded royale with a gross weight of 217.15 kilogram 19.8 million naira cash was also recovered from the five suspects and two other suspects dealing in methamphetamine in weary and psychotropics in ikiti state were also arrested some victims of Monday's attack on the Abuja Kaduna train who received treatment at the St. Gerard's Hospital Kaduna have been discharged. I'm happy because I'm alive and I'm sad because many people have died and many people were abducted. Some they don't even know where they are. As of today, we have um, treated them and uh, most of them have left. We only have one on admission for now. Senate has passed the Witness Protection and Management Bill, which seeks to provide support and protection for witnesses. The bill is also aimed at establishing a Witness Protection Fund. To provide for legal and institutional framework for the protection of witnesses and related persons, in respect of disclosures made for public interest. And this is uh, the third or the fourth contribution of this Senate in the last one month on the fight against corruption. The Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs has formally handed over the supervision of the East-West Road to the Ministry of Works and Housing. And this follows a presidential directive which was a fallout of a request by monarchs from the Ogoni clan on a visit to the president. Thank you, Mr. President, the President, for giving us the opportunity to make the impact we have made. As a ministry, we feel very proud that we have taken the project to this level. We will work with your team to undertake actual site verifications and inspection so that we are able to sign off. Former Governor of Nasser State, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, has formally assumed duty. As the third elected national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, he set top on the agenda of the new National Working Committee is to strengthen and promote strategies to sustain the party's winning streak. I promise you the spirit of collective leadership, teamwork, I cannot deliver alone. If you bring any division tendencies, we will deal with it. And this party is bigger than any single member. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, has been awarded World Health Organization Global Benchmark Level 3 Regulatory Agency. Director General of the Agency, Professor Mujishola Adiei, made this known in Abuja. That's the news for now. Good morning, Nigeria. Continue shortly with Kinsley and Nadabo right after this timeout. Good morning. All right, you're watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. It's time for us to take some business news. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria is announcing a minimum share capital of 10 billion naira, a non refundable application fee of 100,000 naira, as well as another non refundable licensing fee of 1 million naira, among other requirements for the registration of an institution to function as a credit guarantee. Company. Let's join our correspondent Aleka Wanaji Arua for details. The
Enterprise Bank announced the requirements in a new guideline for regulation and supervision of credit guarantee companies in Nigeria released on the website of the bank. This is as currency in circulation in Nigeria fell to 3.25 trillion naira in February 2022 compared to 3.29 trillion naira recorded as of January 2022. Meanwhile, oil prices clawed back heavy losses to rise more than 2% on Wednesday on supply tightness and the growing prospect of new Western sanctions against Russia. Even as signs of progress emerged from peace talks between Moscow and Kyiv, Brent crude features were up $2.48 at $112.71, reversing a 2% loss in the previous section. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Features rose $2.72 to $106.96 a barrel, erasing a 1.6% drop on Tuesday. Also, Kremlin said that Russia will not immediately demand that buyers pay for its gas exports in rubles, promising a gradual shift and saying Russia should work on a wide idea to widen the list of its exports requiring ruble payments. And taking a look at Wednesday tradings on the floor of the exchange. With business news, Alika Okpanachi, Arua. All many thanks, Alika, for the business news. Coming up next on the program is the newspaper review. Our new super reviewer, Bayo Atoebe, is here with us in the studios. Bayo, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Kinsley. Good morning. Good morning, right. Yusuf. You're welcome, Bayo. Good morning, Nigeria. Okay. Uh, now that way, you want to start or you want to kick off? No, let's start it down. Uh, okay. Uh, let's take a look at the window page of the Nation newspaper, and it's quite busy. We start from the uh, middle section of the paper, uh, which says, Train Attack. That's the uh, kicker for that uh, headline, Terrorists Contact Hostages Families. And terrorists Contact Hostages Families. And the photograph you see there on the front page is a family of six in the hands of bandits. It's according to uh, Sheo Sonny, who was a senator uh, in uh, Kaduna State. It says the photograph has a uh, cut line. Family of six among those kidnapped by terrorists on Monday in the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Uh, the source of the photograph is Sheo Sonny himself. Now, there are a number of writers to that uh, headline of the terrorists contacting hostages' families. Sober mood at bank over MD's abduction. Now, they used buses uh, to take away victims, says survivor. Amechi, that's Minister of Transportation, we need 8 billion naira to replace four coaches. Uh, two kilometer rail tracks destroyed. Helicopters and drones to shadow trains. Governors, violent attacks threaten our capacity. Casino commissioner loses finger. Aerofi, we are at war. And uh, let's take other headlines right at the foot of the front page there. Name same linkage ends today. UTME begins May 6th in 647 centers. And then above the name flag of the uh, nation newspaper itself, the following headlines. No room for failure, uh, says APC chair. Adamo assumes office. Bandits kill 23. Abduct many in Kaduna village and gunmen came in numbers. 16 drowned fleeing terror attack in Niger community. Autumn months victims of headsman attack in Benue. And Nigeria and others to get $100 billion climate control cash. Udo Hayatuddin swelled PDP presidential aspirants to 12. 
Wabu Ward Mamodu in the race, sale of farms to close April 18th. Federal government distributes relief items to resettled Borono IDPs. Kwan Kwanso is NNPP leader. That's page 28. Okay, thank you, Kinsley, for those highlights. Um, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Can we have the leadership place on the front page? Um, let's start from the top and then she was there before we get down to the bottom. Um, on page six, we have um, FG, that's federal government, acquires lie detectors, night vision goggles for NDLEA. That's to fight drug and drug abuse and drug trafficking. On page 21, we have a U.S. waves interview for non-immigrant visa, page 21. Coming down a little, uh, we have a story on page 7 that Senate asks DSTV, Star Times, and others to cut tariffs. Senate asks DSTV, Star Times, and others to cut tariffs. Details of that on page 7. Moving down, still on page 7, 2023, APC mounting pressure on INEC to shift election, PDP alleges. APC mounting pressure on INEC to shift election, PDP alleges details on page 7. On page 6, to on the left-hand side of the page, um, I have 12 months to deliver, as APC chairman says, Adam. On page 24, 2023, Udom hired to Dean Ohobunwa pick PDP forms. And uh, down there, Ramadan stakeholders caution Muslim preachers against provocative sermon. That's on page 12. The big story, as usual, today on the leadership newspaper is um, on page 4, and that is Kaduna Tron attack. He says we have failed. The governors apologize to victims, and the writers are. Say attack question the capacity to govern. The second rather is bandits contact families of kidnapped victims, kill nine security operatives in Niger. The third rider is reps berate service chiefs over incessant attacks. And then we have the final rider on that very big story is thirteen women, children drawn while fleeing from terrorists. Rather than the leadership newspaper here. I think we have another one here which is um, Al Jazeera, can we have the Al Jazeera please? Al Jazeera, Nigeria, that is. There are some few stories there. Let's check in there and see. Uh, right under the main plate, we have, um, you know, group donates. Can we have it please? Al Jazeera, Nigeria. Group donates 67 million naira for Emir Phyllis presidential form. I have details of that on page 9. And then um, the main story, the big story I would say is Abuja Kaduna Real Bombing. It says how passengers cheated death. Details of that on page 8. And there are some few stories on the right hand side there. When it's on page 23, 14 billion dollars lost to farmer herder clashes annually, says Oshimba Joe. On page 12, NDLA arrests leader of Lagos Airport Drug Syndicate. On page 24, uh, CBN disburses three trillion naira to facilitate economy recovery. And on page 22, oil marketers, uh, depot owners disagree over petrol price hike. At the foot of the page, we have two stories. One is on page 30, and uh, that's talking about uh, Lawan constitutes seven-man ad hoc committee to probe pay TV tariff hike. Lion can still seven man ad hoc committee to pro pay TV tariff hike. And finally, on Al Jazeera Nigeria on page 26, Buni out Adamu in as APC NWC assumes office. Bio? Thank you, Isu Nadabu. Uh, the story about the terrorist attack on the Abuja Kaduna train dominates the story. The latest is that of the 26, Passengers who were admitted as a Gerard Hospital, they all have been discharged with the exception of one who is still there under observation and is likely to be discharged any time from now. At the 44 Army Referral Hospital also, seven patients are, are the only ones left on admission. Two of the patients uh, are said, one is said to be 
have critical bones while the other has a bullet in the heart and they are expecting experts to be brought in to for further examination uh, and evaluation for surgery meanwhile uh, the minister of info uh, transportation has thanked the nigeria army referral hospital for providing pro bono services to the patients. Surprisingly, however, the minister is reported in another paper as saying that Nigerians may have to liaise with the hospital <coughs> management and see how much they can contribute uh, for the patients. When actually during the visit by the vice president and the governor of Kaduna State, there was indication that all the people will be treated uh, as gracia, that is, we will pro bono without any charges. Meanwhile, there are other reports. A lady survivor on the train on Monday night attack at uh, Kaduna Abuja Airway says that the attackers target the business class coach, which is often referred to as the VIP coach. The lady says that she is a student, but she was on the coach, and the criminals came and forced open the, the, the door of the business class by shooting at some of the passengers, and they took some of them away into the bushes. She added that the, those who attacked the, the van were, he described them as children, with age ranging between 18 and 20. And he added, they, are, they don't look like Nigerians. They are like Chadians and Nigerians because they spoke a language uh, that is ful Fulani, which is very distinct from the Fulani in Nigeria. He says all of them, they were about 20 in, in number. Meanwhile, the one of the family of a lady who was uh, abducted has been contacted by the terrorist. They informed the family that their daughter is with him, with other passengers, and she is saved. They call for uh, uh, a, a, a calm, but the family is alarmed. They said they were praying for God to intervene for the release of their daughter. Um, the other story relates to the presidency has indicated that there will be a probe at the stampede of the Mashoud Abiola Stadium following the Super Eagle loss to the Black Star. Senior Special Assistant to the President Garba Shehus indicated that the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and the Minister of Youth and Sports are to provide a report for, the Europe, for Mr. President and he has indicated that uh, the law will take its course. Meanwhile, uh, a sad development that happened at the stadium which led to the death of Mr. Joseph Kabungu has been clarified by the Nigerian Football Federation. Dr. Kabungu was a doping control officer who was to uh, uh, exercise his duty on the Ghanaian players, but he was found gasping just by the dressing room of the Ghana Black Star team. His colleague from South Africa, Mr. Kaboye Bisoyong, discovered him, but when efforts were made to resuscitate him, failed, he was rushed to hospital where he gave up uh, the ghost. Uh, the, the other this attention was also drawn to Mr. Onimisi Salami, the Nigerian doctor counterpart, as well as his South Africa counterpart, who were all there. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Football Federation and the Zambian High Commission are already making arrangements about how to uh, handle his body. The Senate yesterday named a seven-man committee to investigate tariff hike by uh, pay TV services. Uh, Senator Habamoro, who moved the motion, <coughs> lamented that there has been an increase about 13.6% uh, since September 2020. Uh, the Senator Habamoro is saying that subscription rates are high and therefore the pay TV services should introduce what he described as pay per view. Uh, apparently, is a case of uh, describing oranges and apples as fruits. They are fruits, but they are not the same legume. Uh, the senator was saying that they should pay like when you have to buy electricity, uh, you, your consumption reduces as you use. So when you are not at home with your DSTV, your DSTV subscription should stop. It doesn't go that way. For the electricity, if you remove your cutout, the electricity is stopped. But for sub pay subscription, the procedure for acquiring content the, is based on eyeballs, the number of persons that watch. And that, on the large scale, means that Nigeria, having very large population of viewers, will have a tendency to have a lower subscription rate compared to other African countries. The other error there also was that the Senate directed the Minister for Communication and on the Economy, as well as the NCC, 
to intervene. Why the licensing authority for pay TV? It's the National Broadcasting Commission. The ministry supervising it is Federal Ministry of Information. So they need to get their, their acts and their facts uh, correct. Well, that's fine. Uh, just to add that um, what the Senate is seeking is uh, the introduction of pay per view. And that is available in some other jurisdictions. Mm. But pay-per-view is mostly for big ticket events. You're having, for instance, uh, a boxing match or uh, some other event that normally will pull a heavy crowd. And if it is not available uh, on, um, on for broadcast through uh, the, uh, the cable service, uh, then it becomes pay-per-view. Sometimes, uh, in, in the past, when you used to have uh, really heavyweight uh, boxing uh, matches, uh, pay-per-view could be up to $50. Uh, and you pay this ahead of, uh, of, the, of the match. Yes. And that is what they normally would use. Say in the U.S., for instance, if you tune to that channel, the channel will be scrambled. Uh, so that's part of what they are seeking to introduce. Pay-per-view, you pay as you, uh, as you watch. So if you are not watching, then you, your credit, your uh, Subscription uh, is not is not running. They just they just keep hiking uh, uh, the the tariff for their services. But I think it, perhaps a more fundamental issue because this matter came up some years ago, uh, and typically they, they, they said no, it doesn't really matter X Y Z. Is there an infraction of competition rules? Good. That you have both DSTV and Go TV uh, probably owned and operated. Uh, by persons, you know, who have linkages. Well, you see, the federal competitions and uh, co federal competition and uh, what do you call them, them, has intervened to say that that att attempt is violation of the copyright of the of subscriber owners. The other level of misinformation is equating pay subscription with pay per view and video on demand. There are all three different types of subscription in the pay services. So unless you understand it, you will mix one with the other. And they are all independent, and they have a different streams of costing. But yeah, Bio, as we're yeah, moving into digitization, Kinsley, I mean, when you look at that, Nigerians are moving towards, you know, having to, you know, watch, you know, through channels and decoders and the rest of them. And most of them have to be paid. And if these classifications are not really made very, very open to Nigerians so that they can now see exactly the rationale behind either pay-per-view or not pay-per-view, there will be lots of problems. There is no light. There is, I mean, so many problems are there. Precisely. I mean, if you are in darkness, I... I <laughs> what do you funny, do? funny stuff. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I went to uh, purchase electricity credit uh, the other day uh, because I was, I was trying to use the, uh, the mobile app and there were challenges with it. So I just said, okay, let me withdraw some cash and then go and pay. I got to the AEDC, or AEDC uh, office and there was no light. Yes. So I then engaged in a conversation <laughs> with the gentleman and I said, Hi, how are you? So I want to buy a ticket, but you don't have light here. So he said, but no, God, don't worry. The uh, ticket, with the, the receipt will print out, give you your token. So I said, no problem. I won't, I won't buy light. I want to buy darkness. So <laughs> <laughs> well, it once happened to me. And you know, know, what I told them was that there's no light to sell me light. And, and they all laughed. Uh, precisely. Yes, it's it's the yeah. well, very quickly, before, uh, because we're getting signals from the uh, director that to wrap up this segment. Uh, there, there are a number of salient lessons that we should also learn from uh, this terror attack. One, I, I, we must continue to give commendation to the Nigerian army and the uh, reference hospital where the injured victims uh, in the uh, attack were taken to. Uh, they have treated them and they are still treating them promptly. But nobody is asking for police report before treating those persons. <laughs> because one of, the, we, we see one of the issues that we face and we lose lives unnecessarily is that a person has a, a gunshot injury the person is taken to the hospital, life is leaking away from the individual, and the hospital staff, usually the front desk, the nurses and others will be saying, go and bring police report. And they, they, we have had lots of debates around this in the past, and they said, look, a police report is not required for treatment of any gunshot uh, 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 injury uh, 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 victim. So, but unfortunately, people continue to make their demands. So can you imagine? If it, at, in the small hours, 
when these persons were taken to the hospital, assuming they were good Samaritans who took them and not the military, are they going to be demanding for police uh, report? Police report? Mm -hmm. and, and the other point is the admission by uh, the governor's forum uh, to say that that attack challenges their capacity uh, to truly govern. That is a fair and candid admission. It also is not, to, not one that will lead to condemnation, but to say that, look, there is a lot of work to do. When we, people have raised the issue about uh, ungoverned spaces and what needs to be done, get the local governments to be functioning, be a true superintendent of your jurisdiction. Uh, these are the issues that we believe that your excellencies will also take a look at. Because right now, I mean, it's, uh, it's getting pretty close for comfort, even those locations where you think are safe. Look at the headlines we read this morning, where 16 drowned fleeing terror attack in Niger community, or torn most victims of Hesman attack in Bedway. Bandits killed 23, abduct many in Kaduna. That's and where so you're having the same story. So all it the is not, are carrying Absolutely. It is not knows. every time mm -hmm. you will be saying, hey, where are the security chiefs? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? You know, there are many layers of, of governance. It is not everybody that answers excellency. And, but we uh, believe that they should kick all of this into And uh, really, thank, thank God so much fully. This, uh, the remaining one and a half hours is going to be on, the, on this very issue, I must say. Okay. We keep talking about the train attack in Kiruna, and that's going to be a uh, topic for this morning. Bio, we thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you. We're watching Good Morning Nigeria. We're reaching you from the Nigerian Television Authority. We'll take a break now. Stay with us. Well, as a prompt for our conversation, which is on Abuja Kaduna train attack, here is a background report put together by Oyeye Ajayi. It was the end of the day's activities and a better and faster means of traveling, the train was a better option. Just some kilometers to Kaduna from Idu Abuja, there was an attack on the train with about eight victims dead, 41 hospitalized, while several others were kidnapped out of over 900 people on board. Bullet holes, shattered windows and doors, shells from the explosion, property of the passengers as well as some spots of blood were left to tell the story. This is the second time the train will be attacked on the same spot in Rijana area. The Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo and some others, including the Kaduna State Governor, had visited the site as well as hospitals the injured were taken to. must continue to provide the kind of security and um, surveillance that is required on the rail tracks. And that of course is something that we are very uh, actively doing to ensure that we have a comprehensive, um, we have a comprehensive uh, plan for protecting rail tracks and protecting all of our, you know, our transport assets everywhere. We've been around to see uh, some of the victims of the, of this very tragic incident, but, um, and many of them, of course, are recovering very well. And we're very happy to, to see that the state government has taken on the responsibility of uh, medical assistance to them and ensuring that they are comfortable and that they are well. Many have questioned the level of security on that route, especially when an attack is reoccurring at the same location. What efforts are being put in place to fully secure the location? What is being done to firm up security across the red lines in the country? These are some questions guests already seated in the studio will be discussing shortly. And by joining us in the studio to discuss Abuja Kedunatron attack once again is uh, Fidet Ohir, Managing Director, Nigerian Railway Corporation. Welcome to Good Morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. It's a sad time. It's a very sad time and I'm really can miss wait and uh, you know sympathize with you looking at what's really happening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, also, uh, part of uh, today's uh, conversation, uh, we'd like to uh, welcome uh, via Zoom, Dr. Bala Hassan. Dr. Bala Hassan is a retired assistant inspector general of police, and of course uh, a regular guest on Good Morning Nigeria. Uh, if that is that's not. Okay, that's right. On the left side of your screen, you can see uh, Dr. Bala Hassan. Dr. Bala Hassan, pleasure to have you this morning. 
Good morning, Mr. President. All right. Good morning. Uh, on the right side of your split screen, you can see Yakubu Nuhu Danja. Uh, Yakubu Nuhu Danja is the Commissioner for Health in Kasina State. Uh, he's joining us uh, via Zoom from a medical facility in Kaduna. And that's because he was also on that ill-fated uh, Abuja Kaduna train service on Monday night. Uh, Yakubu Nuha Danja, uh, we uh, welcome you to Good Morning Nigeria, and uh, want to start a conversation with you uh, this morning. Pleasure is all mine. Good morning, everyone. All right, we want to start a conversation with you uh, this morning. What do you remember about that horrific night? Well, what I remembered on that uh, horrible night is a very sympathetic situation where uh, one wouldn't want uh, that situation to occur again. Uh, honestly, uh, it was around 7.50, that's 10 minutes to 8. Uh, barely 30 minutes to our destination, uh, that's to Rigasa train station. Uh, we had uh, some sounds uh, from the raid. Uh, the train was not moving smoothly. We had as if a trailer, an old trailer, is uh, traveling on on Tad Road. You know. Uh, people were looking at each other, trying to ask what is really happening. But before one could answer you on what is happening, we just had gunshots from all over the train, from all sides of the train, uh, sporadically. And uh, the bullets were penetrating through the body of the train. And uh, People were so confused of what to do. Some were leaving their couch to other. Some were trying to have an escape, an escape route. Uh, many of us, when we realized going out may not augur well, I decided to converge in almost one couch, you know, one on top of the other. And suddenly and cleverly, the operator of the train uh, shut off the engine and uh, shut off the lights of the train. I have to be fair to the policemen that were uh, working with the train uh, for the efforts they have put within their power, within their limits. I know if not for their resistance, uh, the penetration into the uh, train by the bandits will have been much more easier. Uh, they really tried, you know, in doing their best to show that there are policemen there. Uh, and that was why when they were trying to force some doors to have access into the train, uh, that couldn't be so easy for them. But after the policemen uh, might have exhausted their bullets, uh, they gain access, the, the bandits gain access, and the policemen were also running helter-skelter looking for a way out. I could recall when a policeman uh, quickly removed one of his shirts and dropped on my body. I said, officer, take your shirt, please. Take your shirt. Uh, he didn't look at me. I quickly held his leg, you know, and uh, threw, threw his shirt to him, uh, asking me whether uh, maybe I should give him my own. I said, if I give you mine, what will I wear? You better find your own. We were under the seats. Everyone was praying, and uh, some people that has... Uh, a network on their phones uh, because I recalled I was holding a phone with uh, an MTN network service uh, there wasn't uh, a network there so some people with uh, network maybe Airtel or so uh, tried putting some calls asking for help 
And uh, unfortunately, we were there lying down uh, in the train for over one hour, 30 minutes. One hour, 30 minutes, nobody could judge whether uh, the reinforcement or the uh, support we were looking for intervention has came or not. All we know, we have been hearing their voices and uh, their voices don't seem to be the voices of uh, the passengers and don't seem to be that for the security men. Uh, they gain access, you know, matching people and uh, taking away those that they can take away. Uh, I could recall one of the victims that uh, successfully escaped from their vehicle. He said there was a vehicle on top of the embankment. Uh, you could recall that uh, the location is a location, apart from the bushy nature of the location, both sides are embankments. And that embankment height is over four meters. Uh, so whenever they bring you out of the train, they try to push you up the top of the embankment, somewhere at the top, pulling you to come over. When they pull you to come over, uh, immediately you see some buses. Uh, according to the victim that escaped, he said Sharon buses and then were three, according to him. I heard from other sources saying uh, five, but he said it's three. So I'll push you there and then they will go again, bring more until that vehicle is fully loaded. According to him, that one of the boss left and then came back to again gather more and go back. Look at the kind of gods they have gotten and the chances within that one and a half hours. And he said they were even using some walking talking, you know, uh, making conversation to each other. And uh, uh, this is what I could call that the shooting uh, penetrated the walls of the train and uh, this is what uh, affected my leg. Uh, I was wearing a shoe, a covered shoe. That covered shoe was completely tattered and the bullet penetrated and went off with one of my feet, uh, toes. And uh, a lady sitting beside me too, that same bullet affected her and uh, she died instantly. I could recall seeing uh, by my side three dead bodies and uh, later when we arrived here I realized the dead bodies were to eight. I mean, the son of those that lost their lives rest in peace and we pray God Almighty will guide our leaders to help curb this kind of situation. This is a situation I noticed that could happen in a broad daylight considering the location of the place and considering the nature of the topography of the place so something intensive must surely be done uh, one of the measures that needs to be taken uh, into consideration is uh, ensuring that we have proper cameras Although cameras are things that could be vandalized, if they are vandalized, how will you trace the vandals? That is one situation, but at least that will be of help. Uh, secondly, is to ensure uh, some reinforced uniform men are uh, really within that area, you know, at intervals. Whenever the train is coming, let them be around. Uh, I believe that is uh, highly cost intensive, but it's something doable. It's better doing it than losing this kind of lives, for we have no alternative. The road is not safe. Uh, the little safest source of movement is the train to a common man, and uh, it's becoming unsafe as there. You could recall some couple of days before this uh, incident, uh, an incident of this nature also happened in the Kaduna airport. It's really sympathetic. The leaders need to sit up. 
these are people that I'm sure if more serious uh, uh, reinforcement will be put in place, I'm sure we can be able to deal with this kind of menace. Something quite sympathetic. Uh, we need to be prayerful and we hope God Almighty will guide us right to uh, bring to an end this kind of menace. Thank you. Oh, thank you uh, so much, Yakubu uh, Nuhudenja. We really sympathize with you and uh, all the victims, and especially those, the last prayer you've heard, with the souls of those who have passed on in this un unfortunate incident, you know, be granted mercy. Well, if I should ask this question, I, I don't know. Normally in situations like in other crimes and other transportation systems, and uh, you find in situations of uh, mishaps like this, accidents or attacks or any other thing negative, you know, the security men will give specific instructions to especially passengers, those involved in the, you know, on the train or in the plane or whatever it is, as to take some remedial measures while these things have been sorted out, if they could be sorted out at the time anyway. Can you remember any specific, you know, instructions from the security men on the train to you guys before you started, you know, lumping yourselves on each other and then moving on by the coaches and things like that? Uh, say again, your last statement, can I remember what? Some specific <coughs> instructions from the security men on the train as to what you should do in these circumstances before you started, you know, falling over each other in trying to find safety. There wasn't any specific instruction given by anyone uh, to the passengers. Uh, no any specific instruction, honestly. Uh, they were also running, you know, uh, doing their best to ensure. I could only recall that uh, I had some gunshots from the side of the train, meaning gunshots of our security men within the train you know trying to to you know counter the shooting from the other side this i can confess they have done their best and i'm sure when they realize uh they are handicapped or they are having lesser weapons than them uh finally i saw some of them around you could recall i said one of the officers was even asking me to give him one of my shirts you know uh to wear after removing his own i asked him to take his own so <laughs> there wasn't any specific instruction given to any passenger after all they were as well running to uh secure their own lives as well uh, uh no danger I, I still want to just stay with you uh what is your <clears throat> Excuse me, what is your condition now? You, you said you took a bullet in, uh, in a foot. Uh, what is your condition? We, we hope that uh, you're responding well uh, to treatment. That's one. The second one would also be, uh, again, to ask what you remember. When and how did help uh, come to uh, the besieged passengers on that train and uh, what happened thereafter well uh, with regard to my condition thanks be to almighty god and uh, thanks to the government of kaduna state as well as to the uh, military uh, we are presently at the hospital facility and uh, we are given treatment uh, up to this moment as i'm speaking with you honestly Nobody asked me of any payments, of any COBO. Uh, I've been operated yesterday, and the remnants of the bullet has been successfully removed, uh, despite the fact that one of the uh, toes, one of the fingers of the legs, uh, has been amputated. And uh, I'm responding very well to treatment. Uh, that is one of the questions you ask. And the other question you ask uh, uh, with regard to, you said specific what? Sorry. 
Sorry, I double-barreled that question. Uh, so let me unpack it. Uh, again, we, we, we sympathize with you, uh, but uh, we, we uh, of course, uh, also applaud your, the fact that you are in high spirits and able to speak uh, to uh, millions of viewers who watch uh, Good Morning Nigeria regularly. Uh, the other question I asked had to do with, you said you were, of course, besieged for about an hour or so, that's to say the train passengers. Uh, yeah, yeah. How did help come and uh, yeah. what happened? How were you then evacuated from the place? Yes, yes. Uh, I could recall uh, the time the military arrived into the train. Uh, for many of us, couldn't believe that uh, they are truly military men. You know, uh, until after some time, we spend over 20 minutes still lying down uh, to observe if truly they are, are genuine uh, security men. Uh, that was after one hour, 30 minutes. Uh, it occurred around 7.50, uh, around 9.30, uh, the military men came and uh, they were moving all over to ensure if there is any casualty, dead bodies, and those that sustain injuries uh, were taken aside, myself inclusive, uh, asking us that uh, those that cannot move uh, should, should identify themselves, and uh, those that were dead were taken uh, aside and uh, their vehicles, the helix they brought, was used to pick some of us that could not move us at that time. But definitely from the train, the couch of the train, to the top of the embankment, you have to move. Uh, if you cannot move, they will back you. And uh, some soldiers were on top to help in pulling you up to the top of the embankment and from there, they took us into their vehicles, the Hilux vehicles, to the main road. Uh, from the location to the main road is about uh, three kilometers, not up to three, two point something kilometers. And we waited for another uh, 30, 40 minutes before the arrival of buses and ambulances. And from there, uh, the buses. Uh, all the passengers in and the ambulances those having injuries were taken into the ambulances and straight to the military hospital 44 uh, even though Kaduna state government has done their own best as well in ensuring that uh, they set up uh, a facility that could cater for this uh, uh, passengers having injuries they have Barodico uh, hospital uh, that was ready as at that time, but the military decided to bring us into their facility. I'm presently in their own facility, but uh, the time we arrived was uh, around 12.30, 12.30 a.m. Uh, remember, this thing occurred around 7.50 p.m., and we arrived here around 12.30 p.m. But immediately we came, they started working on us, treating those that they can treat. In fact, on that very night, they discharged some of the vehicles, uh, some of the passengers with lesser injuries. Some, uh, of course, is just trauma. Uh, some having uh, high blood pressure uh, were seriously down. Some, you know, have to collapse instantly at that time, especially the women among us. I can remember there was one old woman uh, who is about 80 years old, you know, moving with a uh, uh, stick. Even to move, I, I observed when she her movement naturally was not very easy. But on that day, I so much seriously sympathized with her, you know, despite using the stick. Uh, that woman completely, you know, collapsed and uh, she was brought to the hospital. But uh, she sustained no injury that you can see uh, glaringly 
I'm sure it was due to the trauma. So after a little drip and some injections, she was uh, instantly uh, discharged. We really thank them for what they have done. Well, thank you so much, uh, Yakubu Nuhudinja. Pray and really for quick recovery of uh, you and all those out there in facilities and uh, the repose of the souls of those who have passed on. Um, Fidel Okiria, the story is not really good and really palatable. They cannot be anyway because this is an attack. And of course, all this rests on your table. From what we heard, then you just said, and from what really we read about victims of this mishap, um, can you take us through what really is expected of operators and security men really on such a train in this kind of circumstance? Just drawing us back to what then just said there was no single instruction or specific instruction from the you know uh, the security men apart from. And the operator put up the engine and of course shut off the lights which really helped them in trying to build the little station before the bandits could find their way into the coaches. Thank you. First of all, I have to sympathize with those uh, families that lost their loved ones, mm. those injured and those yet to be heard of, to be accounted for. And uh, nobody expects such a thing and pray for such a thing to happen. Mm. We just, because of the situation, the situation we are, we have to ensure that we have our men on train. Before now, we, we, the best we can have is St. John Ablance and Man of War. But knowing where we are in this, not just Nigeria, but the world, we have to ensure that we have... Um, the train had 18 policemen, armed policemen. There were nine coaches, two per coach, and the... the we went to site and we saw what happened and uh, it was properly planned the location as he said where we have a cutting and a backment of over 10 meters and uh, if you are caged there there's no way to run and when it happened the, unlike the previous one that the train could still move and was on track i think these people dismantled some of the track and also planted the bomb and immediately the explosion happened, the train was off the track. That's the noise it was uh, talking about. Mm -hmm. it, affected, it impacted on the, not this time not on the locomotive, but on the first coach following the locomotive. And that one almost capsized. And uh, under that situation, I think the, the, the impact, I don't think uh, the, the policemen were really uh, to even start giving instruction, the immediate uh, this thing would be to see what is happening, whether they can fight back or not. Mm -hmm. I think that is what uh, we've been to the hospital. Uh, out of uh, 25 that were at the military hospital, we met only seven. The rest have been discharged. At the Catholic hospital, only one uh, lady remaining. So. We, it, 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 this type of major is faced to strike, I think, from or my, I'm not, not real, I'm not an expert in security or military life mm. operation. I believe when you have a gun, if they hit you first, I don't see how, because they're on top right there, and the train is down. Mm. And you are inside the coach, you don't even see up, mm. but they are all. But they could not come in because knowing that they are, at least there were some uh, reaction by gun replying them, that delayed the access to the to the train. And that place, due to the nature, the network, and just about two weeks ago, in order to solve that network, we deployed to Raya on our on each of those three rigs, so that. The, the operator, like the driver, we have continuous communication with the base. And the, the, the activation of the handset at the station was just done that very day to be sent to the station. And this happened. So the communication was slow in coming. 
But what happened was that when the next station could not get the train at the time of getting the train, mm -hmm. he has to call control and say, we don't know what is happening. This train has not reached us. So they called me. I said, okay, let's pray nothing bad happened, but just let us, uh, before we know it, we confirm there was an incident and an attack. And we we'll have to be making calls. And luckily, I think the the the, the reaction of the military and other security agents, I think, was prompt enough under our condition, knowing where it's not an easily accessible place, and not that they have not had men right there on the spot. And you are not keeping men. Say, wait, today they are going to attack the train, and you just go there. So you still need to call up men and call up the materials. Mm -hmm. So I think I give a kudos to our military and uh, those who organized that. Uh, they tried and uh, and luckily, I would say, if it was on the Friday, mm -hmm. it would have been much, much. Because Friday, a train leaving Abuja at that time, I always feel to the brim. For the weekend. Yeah. yeah. But today, it was a Monday evening, mm -hmm. and from our records, 398 people bought tickets from a validator because you have to validate yourself to get access to the platform to board the train boat at the uh, Idoa Kuba, uh, Kuba 368, 362 boarded and so far we have been able to contact 140 of the passengers and 127 confirmed that they are safe, uh, 123 confirmed that they are safe, 17, their relation confirmed that uh, they are still missing. The others we are yet to get, either the number is not available or uh, out of reach. Okay. Uh, but we have also been getting calls of people that the, uh, uh, the bandits have contacted, the families, and they are getting back to us. So some people ask, why would you disclose those numbers? We know Nigeria, even those not affected will be calling the numbers. So we are very trying to be strategic in our way of communicating and uh, getting out to the people. People not affected, you see, they, they will start blocking the line and do some other funny things. Okay, uh, Edina Ohiria, uh, thank you very much uh, for the information that um, you, you have uh, provided because uh, early on usually uh, when a situation is fluid you have all kinds of numbers flying around. <laughs> we heard initially that there were some oh, 970 uh, persons on board uh, the, uh, the service uh, but now you're saying 398 tickets were purchased, uh, 362 boarded. Uh, these figures, of course, uh, are the same figures that the Kaduna uh, state government had earlier given. But <clears throat> this was not an express train service. So you would imagine, therefore, at, uh, if uh, there were stops along the way, uh, they could pick up uh, other passengers along the way. Okay. Uh, it, for Kaduna Abuja, yes. we have five terminal stopping stations. Idu, Kuba, uh, uh, Regina, Re, uh, Regasa, I think uh, 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 the station immediately after uh, Kuba, Jerry. Uh, what we hardly have two, three people, and they don't have facility to buy tickets on this spot. You must buy online mm -hmm. at that okay. location. So no, uh, nobody bought it from the manifest. and. They also, they also need to pass through the speed star to validate if they bought ticket. We don't have record of anybody boarding from those two other stations that very, on that very train. It's, it, it, it's, it's a, a digital and it's, if anybody can see it and <laughs> look at it. Yes. Uh, yeah. So what do we know at this time? about uh, the NROC crew that were on the train yeah. service. Okay, we have some people, who, uh, fortunately we lost one of the cleaners, two of the cleaners, uh, they have contacted us, they have been heard, and it, one of the drivers too has been heard. They have contacted those families, and uh, we are seeing what, you know, this cannot be done individual basis. 
it has to be done in the higher group. Uh -huh. So, and we are leaving those experts to handle the, the security uh, people. But the information we get to pass on because the family gets to us first and we pass on. So that's what I can say about, the, about that. What we have now is that the cleaner one died, a lady. Uh, three of the cleaners head and one of the locomotive driver also had from our own end. Yeah, you had two drivers on the train? Yeah, two drivers per train because uh, you like the pilot, don't know what will happen within that journey mm -hmm. time. And the second so train, from. second driver? No, that one is sorry. Okay. Oh, fine. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, MD. Uh, we'll get back to you in the course of this uh, discussion later on. Let's move over to uh, Dr. Bala Hassan. Bala Hassan is a retired assistant inspector general of uh, general that is and uh, policy and community safety. Um, you've heard what Danja said and you've also heard what uh, the MD said, Fidel Okila here. But I'm very much concerned about the security architecture of a train, especially a train in motion and a train, you know, that is moving, uh, especially on such a very busy route. Um, I asked uh, the MD here, and of course he gave us a rundown of what they have. Now, as a, you know, a security expert, I would say, how do you see this architecture? How good, how well, I mean, how sufficient, and uh, what was really missing? What was the missing link, if there were any? And what really were the positives on this architecture, if you've really had them very well? Uh, good morning, viewers, once more. Mm, you know, as uh, the Kaduna Abuja Highway is being properly policed for now, there is likelihood, and that's exactly what happened, that these criminals will have to look for money by other means. They are desperate, and uh, from records and from the, the security situation on that road, it has improved considerably. So one would expect, if nothing is done on this Kaduna Abuja train, these people are likely, because they have planted it before. So what I saw the problem here is, there was no sufficient security inside. There may not be sufficient security inside that uh, train to repair the attack because this, this whole lumps and the criminals come in large number in their hundreds. So even if you put half or a full unit of mobile policemen, they may only, they may still dare it because they, they are desperate. Because criminals want to commit offenses if they know that they commit offenses and there's no certainty of arrest or punishment. So, in this light, we have to look at it. this scenario that happened, very unfortunate. But to what we know, when we have other transportations like uh, the aircraft, if, if there's a problem with a plane, within a second, the control room is supposed to know there's a problem. And Oh. <coughs> oh, it seems uh, we've... Uh... We've lost uh, Dr. Bala there. Whenever we reconnect, we continue this question. Okay, we're told that she's back now. Let's hear you. You're talking, Dr. Bala. Right on, right on, Dr. Bala. We're listening. The army, the army came about one hour, 30 minutes. It may not be their fault from the local team because if it's the time they inform them to arrive, that there was danger that. Well, uh, well uh, we'll get back to you later. It seems to have a little glitch there. So, um, uh, we're back to you, Fidel Okiwe. That very axis of uh, the road is really problematic, very troublesome. Regina, for instance, when you look back, you know, into history, you find that that place, as you mentioned, the embankments are very high, the place is dangerous, and lots more of that. Um, from this experience, even when the 
you know, the, the rails are being laid mm -hmm. and when the, these things are being conceived. These are things that are supposed to have come to mind and been placed on the table for serious scrutiny. Um, I, I don't know how this very aspect skipped, you know, uh, the, the design, the execution, and of course, the operation of these trends. You, you see, when you have a, a general principle in mm. construction of rails all over the world, uh, it's not unique to Nigeria, and, uh, and what we try to do is also have the modern signaling and communication that is real time, and that's what we are working on. And you have to have that basic infrastructure, like power, like communication, for you to get real time uh, 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 information on the on the control uh, system. Because uh, now we may be forced to have our own, uh, uh, separate from the normal general communication, uh, just as uh, only for Nigerian railway, we come at a cost, and at the same time, we we. The, the, the railway personnel is not properly trained for the security, insecurity that is happening. And we cannot isolate the rail from the national uh, security program. It has to be captured and along with it. Because today, it, it's rail. But uh, even after that Monday, a lot of these things would have happened you know, in bits outside the rail system. Mm -hmm. It's just because it happened on rail and the volume of people we carry that this at a peak. And the, now that it has happened, I think everybody concerned, we have to sit tight and ensure that protection will be uh, provided. Uh, not because we have cameras inside the coach, mm -hmm. but you can only see what happened uh, when we play back during that period. But on the track, we don't have such security. And the last time I was here, I, thought, I told you that we are doing a procurement process to ensure that at least Abuja Kaduna can be monitored real time. That if you have infraction on the track, you know, one person, even a cow, is on the track, you can notice it and see what that person is doing. Right. We uh, hope uh, uh, Engineer O'Hira, I'm sorry to interject. We will have the opportunity because we have you in the studio. Uh, we understand that. Um, Dr. Bala Hassan is back to us via Zoom. Uh, Dr. Bala Hassan, you, you were uh, explaining uh, something before we, uh, we lost you uh, in the connection just went off. I, I wanted to take along this question because when we say that the uh, attackers uh, came in their tens or in their hundreds, I, I'm just wondering, I mean, how could this just be happening? And nobody picks up any prior information as to how and when and uh, where, most likely, uh, these bandits or terrorists would strike. These are locations that are within the jurisdiction of uh, security and uh, other personnel. Uh, where does, uh, how does this happen that, you know, tens or even hundreds of bandits will carry out, even plan this, and... Uh, there is no interception. Uh, that's where the deployment of technology comes into play, because uh, the, the the track is very long. There is no way you can put policemen or security men from Kaduna to Abuja to police. But uh, I learned previously that the Inspector General Police has acquired unarmed aerial vehicles. What are the use of these unarmed aerial vehicles? But well, I suppose we deployed. They're supposed to deploy it on these vulnerable areas, the flashpoints, so that if there is any incursion by by groups, security groups, it will be detected and uh, security deployed to deal with them accordingly. So this is not done. There is no way you can police Kaduna, Abuja physically. It must be by scientific means. And when there is technology deployed, this on area will be able to see that there are some group of people moving sufficiently. And when they give the social report, it is for the men on the ground now to who I, so I believe should be put on certain intervention centers along the road. There should be intervention centers around the road whereby if there is any incursion, these people can move immediately to come and, and act. That way, 
these who laws will be deterred from committing this crime. But manually, this is rather impossible. And you can see when the from the report when the military came and intervened, they worked off the terrorists. They ran away. But the time they came, some damage had been done. The military may even may, may have come by road. We have uh, a, a record: Nigeria trying to purchase Chinook helicopters from uh, U.S. Uh, 2014, but it was not possible because of uh, human rights abuses. But now that we have seen that the chiefs are done, if they have not already bought the Chinook uh, helicopters, they should go ahead and, and acquire them. These are helicopters that are armor plated and they can carry as many as 50 troops. So with that way, from the intervention centers, once we the, the unarmed aerial vehicles have detected incursions, they can move them to come and secure the people who are in distress in a very short period. But you can see the army body. I must be, I want to believe that the army were not informed immediately this thing happened. I start to be corrected because the time the thing happened, if they have immediately there was no communication between the train and Kaduna, the plane, train couldn't communicate to where the destination and they couldn't communicate from the starting point, then the people in the control room should know that there was danger. There is no harm in in escalating the situation and informing the military so uh, or the security forces so that they can move in immediately in time to work of these hoodlums. So enough has to be done. More things have to be done to stop these things. That is one of the things that I think should be done. But on a long term, it's better to comb all these forests and deal to carry this battle to these hoodlums once and for all because when they are not dealt with, there are many. And we have reports that when the army enters some visa, more than 50,000 uh, Boko Haram surrendered, which means these people are in their thousands. It is not easy to be killing five, three, four, and think they will finish. So I hope the security forces should come together and carry this battle, come all the forests, all the forests where they are likely to be, because these forests are, whether you like on, on government territories, because they used to be uh, uh, range, uh, there used to be forest reserves where in those days, but now these things are no more happening. So this occupy those areas, they should be identified by technologically by use of drones and the security forces should jointly deal with them decisively as they are doing in Zampara. And this should be done in all facets. If they start it in Zampara without doing it in Kaduna or vice versa, they will move to other areas by domino effect. They will move to area where they say. So if they want to go ahead and carry out this approach, I'm suggesting that they, they, all the states affected, Kaduna, Zampara, so Kodiko, Kasina, should do it at the same time. That way, it will be able to bring this thing under control. Otherwise, if you start uh, making majors do it here, then we run here, we we'll continue to run the circle. We will still uh, be off our guard, and this may likely happen. So I'm suggesting that the government should do much more than it's doing. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Dr. Bala Hassan. Well, I want to return to uh, the uh, piece of my question. Namely, how is it possible for this kind of incidents to be occurring fairly regularly? Uh, a few days earlier, before the uh, uh, train attack, we saw what happened at the Kaduna airport. Uh, whole villages in some other locations have also been sacked. And you hear of scores of, of these uh, terrorists and hoodlums uh, arriving to carry out uh, the atrocities and in the case of uh, the train attack for them to have uh, uh, been uh, so well organized along of course with their logistics for uh, moving uh, those whom they were going to kidnap on the train service and nobody could intercept no intelligence was picked up to say this is what is likely to happen and therefore you begin to work on it you talked about the uh, unmanned area uh, uh, vehicles. Those unmanned area vehicles will only pick up information uh, as to where, for instance, there's an interference with, uh, with, with the rail track or where people are gathering. But I'm saying, just plain human intelligence. Nobody is picking this up. and It happens on a regular basis, and no questions are asked, and apparently no sanctions uh, given to those who cover those locations and where these things happened. Well, we will look at a uh, failure of intelligence because each of the security arms have their own duty to perform for, for Nigeria to be safe. 
So those who are in charge, because they are supposed to, they are supposed to, through their, I learned they use walkie talking from the information we gather from some of the speakers. These are things that should be intercepted. And also they must be using telephones. They must use telephones. So the security agents, those in charge of intelligence, have a duty to ensure that to intercept some messages and interpret them and, and raise a red flag that is likely to be attacked in a particular area. If this is done, the men who are who are who operate overtly will come and deploy themselves in this area to ensure that this thing doesn't happen. So each one of the security forces should up their game and do what they are supposed to do. If there are certain things they lack in this regard, the National Assembly is there to appropriate phone for them, but they should produce results. They should produce Nigerians are not after uh, our this are done uh, Nigeria want to see results. And you, we want to feel that uh, if you are giving somebody a task, give me a task, give me a timeline. Okay, in the next six months, this is what you want. Is it what you want? Okay, if you want to produce result, okay. If there is no result, there are people who are ready to do the work. We fire you. That's how it should be done. We are working in the system. We know some of us succeeded because we are afraid of of the consequences of uh, being disgraced out of office. So you have to sit up, put your thinking cap, do the right thing. And, uh, and and uh, get results for, for, for yourself and your career and for your nation. So the intelligence community should rise up their game and work with other security forces. Each of them should, should rise up their game and make sure that Nigeria and Nigerians are safe. Nigerians want a safe country and what they expect is to, to get it. And if there is any lacuna, any loophole in what they are looking for, they should go to the National Assembly, this is what they want. But if they give them, they should produce results in Nigeria. It's not a matter of that. Because it's, it's not a time for tea party. Each head of department, each uh, head should sit down and work 24 hours to see that Nigeria is safe. When this is done, we won't have any problem to talk about. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bala Hassan, and indeed the other guests. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we we'll continue with the conversation. Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria, and we're talking about or continuing our discussion on the Abuja Kaduna train attack. This uh, second part we started that on Tuesday. And now <coughs> let's move on, Fidel Okiri, and then um, draw from history now and look into the future, see what we really can do. Because what has happened has happened. We're now trying to see the possibility of. Uh, you know, avoiding or forestalling future occurrence. We are in the know of, you know, such, a, not exactly such, but vandalization of, uh, you know, rail tracks all the time. That was last year or thereabout. And uh, I, I can remember the Minister of Transportation was here. We talked about that and she gave some assurances regarding some security. And uh, here we are again, not only vandalized, but this time around, vandalized to a point of attack in which so many lives were lost and of course a lot of people are still recuperating in the medical facilities. I, I don't know how, what has happened really or what do we, what do we need to do? I mean, for once between two eyes shy, we cannot be told of how dangerous and how bad the situations are. You are at the center of this, all things fall on the table, the box was there and you know, I always want to dip into you or dig into your mind and then see what's running in your mind given the fact that it's your coaches that's carrying people all over yes. and they always remember the lives that were lost and the lives if those that are being, you know, you know, uh, carried from one point to the other. I don't know. So you see, you see on the vandalization, it got to an alarm stage that uh, <laughs> even People were now escorting those that were vandalizing. I raised the alarm once here. And uh, I think, luckily, now that uh, has reduced because of the uh, what I've said openly on air about uh, police arranging, arresting soldiers, soldiers arresting police, the civil defense already. Uh -huh. But do you know the irony of it all? Mm. Even when we want to move material officially, it is the one they hold. Like we want to do a side in front of say move some material from Bauchi. It will take one week, I will be writing letters to, to allow them to pass. But 
But meanwhile, the vandalized items are express, moving. Express passage. Yeah. So I think we have to change our attitude and culture. I, I, you see, somebody only live once, and he, I don't see somebody who has said he has had enough money in his life that can make you risk people's life like this. A, a, a train, if it's carrying 20 wagons of goods, don't even say human being, it's worth some billions of dollars if it's cement. So if you allow that to happen, like we are experiencing it most often, we not, it costs us extra money to first of all send a lighter truck like the Rebus. You go from so distant to those distant, ensure that the truck is, has not been vandalized before the next train can come in. And you cannot meet up uh, uh, the, the, the journey time of such a train because you have to be sure that the, every second you are checking. The, so that's why we say, okay, if we deploy technology <coughs> that can monitor it, it will reduce cost. Yeah, that is the uh, operational cost, but the capex will be high so much. And you see also have to protect even those equipment you want to deploy based on our pe present cultural situation. So. We just pray that people change their mind and know that there is no. Uh, well, pray, pray, prayer is good, but uh, law enforcement <laughs> is also very important. When things beyond you pray, do you yeah, understand? That, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, and that's you know, true. Yeah. in addition to what uh, my colleague asked, but more specific, back again to the uh, Abuja Kaduna train service. Uh, those, you had a derailment. Uh, I don't know what language you use uh, in uh, in the railways. If it's like a ship that is sunken, you say you refloat the yeah, ship. Back, uh, so uh, in the railway, <laughs> I, I would imagine that you are going to tow uh, the uh, derailed trucks, uh, derailed uh, 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 coaches, uh, and take them to your workshop. And then, of course, do all the things. So, uh, how long is this likely to take? And then, just from my observation, is this going to be a costly operation? Yeah, it's going to be costly. We have to pro ensure that our men are properly protected in that zone. Uh, that's a cost element. The soldiers, the mobile policemen have to be there, and at least they have to be fed. And. Uh, I, I, the men have to walk right now. Ordinarily, we walk day and night, but we cannot walk ni at night in that present location. So we have uh, have a timeline of two weeks to get back and uh, probably start operation. Because uh, what we have here is 12 coaches and one locomotive. Luckily, one of the, the locomotive that was leading, uh, nothing happened to it. We have been able to restart that. I move it to Kaduna. So yesterday our men have, because of the terrain, we have a railing jack that can go there and pick the coach and put back on the section that is good. But as I said, it's a cutting. The, 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 there is no enough space for, to maneuver crane. So what we have, we have what we call a, a lifting jack. Uh, before now we used to have the one that we required 10 people to jack, but now it's with the press of the button. The jack we lift up, we, we connect it to lights. So we hope by today we'll be able to have recovered two based on assessment. And the track has to be laid because the track is already twisted mm. because of the disconnection they had on the, on the clip. Mm. So we are target, uh, we hope within the next two weeks, everything, all things being equal, uh, the track will be, will have been fixed. Uh, for the coaches, except when we take the, the take them to the workshop and do proper diagnosis that we know those that can be back immediately and those that will require maybe even getting spare parts and on to fix them. So. You know why I'm asking this? Not about, if you recall, uh, a couple of years ago, the commonest complaint about the Abuja Kaduna Trade Service was that we didn't have enough coaches. Yeah. Now you right. have provided apparently uh, three, some, uh, three, three sets. So come again, please. Three sets of three sets. Aha, uh -huh. and uh, here we are. So, mm -hmm. if you 
if you relaunch, are you going to have enough coaches? Or, as I said again from my observation, how long might it take? Because we understand there are pock marks from the bullets that yes. were fired yeah. uh, by uh, the terrorists. Yes, a lot of, uh, a lot of them. The punch holes and all those. Oh, see, what we do is, uh, for now, we may have to limit ourselves to, I'm not saying it can not happen daytime. We limit it to day, but there will be a pressure again. People say take care like a theory because they don't have enough uh, uh, trains. So we definitely sh we shop them, repair, ensure we repair them properly. They have to be fit. And I think we are going to start with the present two. Maybe we have we set up these t uh, ten trains we are running. We we'll go back to six a day and try to make sure we don't run in the night. I think that should be our immediate plan. We have to go back and set our timetable to mix the maximum demand time and so that uh, we can serve Nigeria well. Okay, thank you, Engineer. For the term, since we're still having uh, Yakubu Nuhu Danja, the Commissioner of Health, Katsina State, who is uh, operating a medical facility in Kaduna, is a victim of this uh, uh, unfortunate uh, incident on Kaduna, I mean Abuja Kaduna train. Uh, <coughs> Yakubu, earlier in your first uh, you know, submission when we just started this program, you even moved on forward and then telling us beyond what really happened to what should happen, I would say, and talking about solutions to this kind of problem. Now, as, a, as, a, as somebody who has experienced this firsthand, I know, God forbid, you know, this, when it happens again, at least you have, uh, you know, a better strategy to, you know, find yourself safer in some other places. What would you tell people boarding trains now, uh, especially on this road, as regards security, their security, and of course, in the event of unfortunate happenings like this? That is one side of the question. The other one is for you, I would want you to complete your own submission regarding the issue of what needs to be done, what the government, the security agencies, the uh, NRC, the Railway Corporation should do in order to forestall this. We have very limited time remaining on this program. Thank you very much for that uh, question. Uh, as I earlier mentioned, that uh, from the side of the government, uh, there is need to intensify more vigilance more security uh especially within that portion uh since this is the second occurrence of this kind of incident uh within that uh location uh they really have a serious uh, advantage and uh considering the fact that the rail uh you know under an embankment embankment that is very high you know and uh, they tend to, from experience, uh, stand within the top of the embankment, and that is giving them uh, more advantage to do whatever they want to do, to be shooting uh, sporadically. So uh, my suggestion, one, uh, to the passengers, financially to desist uh, from joining the evening train, and I'm sure the government as well, too, should be able to look at a situation where they will substitute the evening train to maybe another hour, maybe leaving by four, and then reaching a destination by six. That may be a little safer, even though uh, the location is a situation, is a location whereby a uh, reoccurrence of this kind of serious uh, damage may happen even in a broad daylight. Uh, so for the government, apart from intensifying security uh, within that location, there is also need for us to have some uh, technology that will help us monitor what is really happening. Uh, from what we observed, uh, the vaults and knots uh, holding the rails uh, were lost. So if we can be able to have some cameras, even though the cameras 
can also be vandalized. And if the cameras are vandalized, unfortunately, up to now, in Nigeria, we don't have that uh, technology to be able to trust uh, who are these vandals. Despite all that, uh, let's do the little we can within our power to install the cameras while uh, maybe vigilance. I know it's really capital intensive and manning people within that location. But as I said, it's cheaper than losing lives. For there is no better way to do this problem from the northern part of the country. Uh, people coming from Sokoto, Zamfara, Kebi, Kasena, Kano, Kaduna, are all passing through Kaduna for them to reach to Abuja for so many things. So we just have to secure these roads by all means. By all means. Uh, honestly, a government needs to stand up more to put more enforcement. The first these people, they are human beings like us. Now we can be able to fight. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they are not stronger than our, our military or our police personnel uh, in terms of the sophistication of the equipment, in terms of the technology and the know-how to do the fight. So we really need to do something. It's quite sympathetic. If you look at the uh, foreigners that are inside that strength, you know, uh, I quite no, sympathize no danger. with them. Yakubu, no danger. If if yeah. I may, if I may, we're getting pressed for time now. Uh, did you get a sense of uh, perhaps a profile of uh, of the assailants uh, when they stormed uh, the train? Uh, because we, we, some accounts we've heard said that uh, these persons were probably uh, in their late teens, around about 18 years, and uh, probably no more than their early 20s. Uh, what what did you get? Did you have the presence of mind to uh, ascertain that, or did you get that also uh, from those who probably encountered them and then slit out the way? Well, uh, for me, I didn't see any of them first to face, but uh, I have seen their legs uh, passing through us while we were lying down in the couch, you know. Uh, but for me to see their faces, that I didn't. Uh, to be able to assess their their age, but uh, one of the uh, people that were able to escape told me that one of the uh, people, one of the bandits that uh, uh, you know attacks him, uh, is not up to twenty years. He's just a teenager, and uh, he was even begging him that please and please let me kindly I give you something to kindly allow me to go. He said, okay, give me. Uh, he said he was having some amount of money, about 50,000 there, which he gave to him, thinking that uh, that may, you know, uh, help him to, to, to be released. After grabbing the 50,000 there, he said to him, uh, let's go, let's go. He said, ah. after our agreement, he said, which agreement? Which agreement? We must go. We are looking for a bigger one, no, not uh, this chicken change. Uh, to him, he said, uh, they are just teenagers. And they were so intoxicated, taking uh, uh, drugs and hems, as he said, you know. Uh, well, they are not uh, too, too old, you know. They are just within the age of uh, uh, 20, 20 something. Up. Okay, no danger. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's also bring in very quickly uh, retired uh, AIG, uh, Dr. Bala Hassan. Dr. Bala Hassan, if you are still there, I want to ask this question. Uh, it's become so commonplace these days uh, when incidents of this nature happen and we are saying, uh, get the military, get the military. I'm just wondering, wh wh is Mopol still in existence? Okay. Um uh, the responsibility of preventing crime solely, we agree, is out of the police. But that's why I ask, when this incident happened, what did the control room do? Did they call the military? Or did they call the police? If they have called the police control room, definitely uh, the, the Mopol men will have moved to come and secure the situation. 
But it still it depends where they are. They are supposed to put this mobile in an area we call intervention centers to identify an intervention center between Abuja and 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 Kaduna. Maybe three intervention centers. Keep them there. Let them be at alert at all times. Anytime this thing happens, they will move. But I know if they are called the Kaduna State Police Command, they will have come. But then, how will they come? If they come by road, it will still be they will come one hour, 30 minutes to the time, and these things will still happen. You understand me? So, in future, what we want them to do is to put in main intervention center so that when this thing happens, the, the mobile policemen, the army, all the security people jointly can move to the scene and ensure they secure Nigerians. Secondly, I want a situation where by the next train that will start running, they should put an aerial patrol. It's not too expensive for Nigerians to do to protect the lives of citizens. There should be aerial patrol to be escorting the train to and fro, no matter what is possible. It's more, it's better than losing so many lives and terrorizing Nigerians. So we should put aerial patrol in addition to drones. That is the only way you assure Nigerians that will care for their safety. But if we allow this train to be going up and down, they may still try their luck one time. And similarly, that area should be identified as a black spot. They should completely secure that area so that it does not happen that place where you have some bodies that are high, where they can go up and start shooting. That place should be secured by the security forces. While all other places, we can identify some three areas and put intervention centers whereby if there is any problem, they can move. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's easier said than done. If they move by road, they may still have problem of movement to the scene where it happened. So that's why earlier on I talked about, let's go with uh, um, um, helicopter that are bulletproof, that this Chinook helicopter I, I monitor, even though it's about 35 million as a 2008, Nigeria can afford it. Now the, they have branded, they have branded them as terrorists. So the, uh, the U.S. government should be able to sell this type of helicopter to, to our security forces. If they can carry 50 men, to move to scene at any given time and ensure we secure the Nigerians. Because if we cannot go by road, our safest way to risk Kaduna and part of the news by rail. And these people should not take take our joy by, by stopping us from going by rail. That is my take on this. Oh, 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 okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Bala Hassan. We appreciate uh, the comments that you have made. Uh, back to the studios, just before we wrap up, Engineer Fida Tokira, very quickly. We, our focus has been on the Abuja Kaduna uh, incident. We know that we are also running the Takbe uh, worry and the Lagos uh, Kano, and the real uh, comeback. It's been in the news. What does this mean for your other operations? You see, we have to it's not it's just because we are discussing Abuja Kaduna. Anything we are doing have to be impact on the other side. So we are not uh, limiting any. Uh, security issue or improvement to Abuja Kaduna alone, because uh, uh, it can be it can be anywhere. Okay. Uh, so we think we, what we are doing will be extended to, and we, the security too should know that it's not just to concentrate on Abuja Kaduna. We have Itakbe Wari, we have Lagos <coughs> Ibada, we have Ibada Kano, and so. Okay, uh, on that note, I uh, would like to appreciate you, Engineer Fide Tohiria, Managing Director of the Nigerian Railway uh, Corporation. Thank you for being our guest on Good Morning, Nigeria. Pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, we also would like to thank uh, Retired Assistant Inspector General of Police, uh, Dr. Bala Hassan. Dr. Bala Hassan, uh, thank you very much, uh, as always, for your insights. And uh, last but not the least, uh, Yakubu Nuhu Danja, Commissioner for Health in the Casino State, victim on that uh, ill-fated uh, train service. We uh, appreciate uh, your time with us this morning and wish you a speedy recovery and uh, that you, uh, as uh, quickly as possible, reunite with your family. Uh, thank you very much. It's thank you. for having me. All right. Okay, uh, if we'll have time for any of our segments, we'll probably we'll take that maybe sponsor for it. And that has been Good Morning Nigeria for today. We thank you so much for being part of it. Join us for another insightful edition of the program come Friday. That is tomorrow. I'm Yusuf Mirabos. And I'm Kingsley Osagolo saying, we'll have a lovely day ahead. <laughs>